Hey everyone, Nick here from another booktube channel, and today I'll be reviewing Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. In 2022, I read Swan Song by McCammon, and it ended up being my top read of that year, and it made me want to branch out and explore some of his other works. After seeing a handful of positive recommendations online, I decided that Boy's Life would be the next one that I jumped into, but I didn't do it immediately for a couple reasons. One, it's not in print anymore, so it wasn't super easy to find, and two, the plot honestly didn't sound all that interesting to me. When I purchased a Kindle earlier this year, the first problem was solved as the ebook was readily available. However, I still delayed because I just couldn't find the right mood to start a coming of age story. At the end of March, I visited a friend down in Alabama and I needed a book for the trip. And I thought there's no better time to finally begin reading Boy's Life because it's set in Alabama. The timing even worked out perfectly because the events of the book start, uh, I believe, on March 16th. And my trip was uh, within a week of that on March 22nd. So if there was anything that was going to put me in the right mindset, it'd be sipping on sweet tea on a porch in the Alabama spring sunshine. Turns out, I didn't need all that ambiance because within five minutes of my plane taking off from New York, I was in love with this book. So, that plot that didn't interest me all that much was this. Corey Mackinson is a 12-year-old boy in the minuscule town of Zephyr, Alabama. One day, while accompanying his father Tom on his milk route, an out-of-control car careens off of the bridge and begins to sink in the lake. Tom jumps in to try to rescue the driver, only to find that the man is already dead. Murdered, in fact, well before the car ever even went off the bridge. Over the course of the next year, the mystery of the unsolved murder hangs in the background as Corey has a series of fantastical experiences involving river monsters, self-aware bicycles, and phantom drag racing cars. Each chapter is basically a self-contained story, and through them all, Corey picks up on clues and hints as to the identity of the killer. My hesitation going into Boy's Life was that it would be too grounded in realism for my liking. I tend to stick to genre fiction, and I was afraid this was just going to be too realistic of a story about just a murder in a small town. In reality, this book is a work of magical realism, very similar to the Greentown books by Ray Bradbury. There are elements of mystery, fantasy, and even horror throughout, but never so much as to break the book's grounded tone. A major theme here is the inherent magic that exists in the life of a child. Simple events are made fantastic through the strength of their perspectives and imaginations. As we get older, we are told to grow up and leave behind those childish imaginings. But though we may leave that world of magic, it never actually disappears. It just patiently waits for us to one day reach back out and grab it. Just as Ray Bradbury did with Dandelion Wine and Something Wicked This Way Comes, Robert McCammon distills the essence of childhood from a simpler era and crafts a piece of perfect nostalgia. Despite the fact that I was born the year this book came out in 1991, I couldn't help but feel a wistfulness in my soul for a time and place that I never personally experienced. I felt like I could remember the feeling of riding my bike next to Corey and his gang through this little town that just opened its first supermarket. That's not to say that this time and place was without ugliness. Being set in Alabama in 1964, there is prominent attention paid here to the civil rights movement and the pervasive racism that abounded at the time. Some folks in Corey's town are active members of the Ku Klux Klan, and they are not shy in expressing their inflammatory opinions. But Boy's Life is unapologetic in its optimism. When a flood threatens the black community of Bruton, which is next to Zephyr, there's a town hall that's called to deal with it. And there are voices in the crowd that call for it to be left alone to be washed off the map, but they are ultimately overruled by the folks who are willing to help. 
That's not to say that Zephyr is a shining beacon of enlightenment that's free of racism, but most of the townsfolk see which direction the wind is blowing, and they are happy to flow with it rather than fight against it. The town of Zephyr is so vividly realized and the characters are so interesting on their own that the murder mystery can sometimes feel like an afterthought when it shows up. At one point, Corey is having dinner with an eclectic writer named Vernon Thaxter, who describes his only published book in this way. And he wrote this book about the town and the people in it who made it what it was. And maybe there wasn't a real plot to it. Maybe there wasn't anything that grabbed you by the throat and tried to shake you until your bones rattled, but the book was about life. It was the flow and the voices, the little day-to-day -day things that make up the memory of living. It meandered like the river, and you never knew where you were going until you got there, but the journey was sweet and deep and left you wishing for more. It was alive in a way that the boy's life was not. I think with this passage, McCammon is describing the book he wishes that he could write truthfully. I think he would love to be able to just write about Mr. Lightfoot with the uncanny ability to fix any machine, or Owen Cathcoat, who claims to be an Old West gunslinger called the Candy Stick Kid, and just leave it at that. But no, he knows that just as there is always beautiful magic in the world, there is also sadness and ugliness that it would be dishonest to ignore. People die. Racism exists. Sometimes you uncover a truth about someone that shakes you to your foundation. These are a part of life, and while it can be difficult, we can't let these things stop us from seeing the magic. I am not ashamed to admit that twice during Boy's Life, I was reduced to a blubbering mess, and in both instances, it was in reference to Corey's dog, Rebel. This is a mild spoiler, but yes, there are a couple instances of dogs dying in this book. The first is very sudden and horrific, but it didn't make me cry. It's the second one that really hit me hard. I'm actually recording this video on the one year anniversary of my own dog passing away, and reading Corey's experience with his dog while preparing for this day was just a little too much for me. That being said, the chapter in question is not at all what you think it is. McCammon found a really creative way to make saying goodbye to a dog interesting. Boy's Life is an early contender for my favorite book of 2023, and it's going to be hard to top. There might be a few stories in it that don't work as well as others, and I probably would have been okay with it being just a little bit shorter, but honestly, I'm just very glad to have read this book. I hope you read it, and I hope you connect with it the same way that I did. My arbitrary and subjective grade for Boy's Life by Robert McCammon is 10 out of 10. Do with that what you will. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for spending some time with me today, but now it's time to get back to reading.